I'm a PhD student in the Molecular Neurogenetics Lab at Perkins. Um, so we find disease genes in families with nerve and muscle disorders, which is hugely important for them because they understand what they have, what they can expect for the future, and also for their family planning. So it's hugely rewarding. I'm talking to them about my journey into science, which I think, like most people, is not a linear path but also um, how we find disease genes and what that means for people and some of the exciting things that we do in science, um, which they seem to enjoy. So we like to say that we're gene detectives. So we track down disease genes, sort of like a genetic whodunit, um, and we solve cold cases with families that don't have an answer. So now I spend a lot of my time doing this type of stuff, um, complete with lab coat and gloves and stuff, but to get there, I first of all did a bachelor's in human biology at Edith Cowan University. So I thought they were really good because they have a, really, um, a lot of really practical uh, lab classes. So you actually like handle DNA and you like do genetic tests on yourself, which is like really cool. Um, and a lot of chemistry and that type of thing. So that was great. So I think a lot of people kind of think that scientists are old and crusty or they're like uber nerds, which we kind of are, but like um, this is actually a photo of our lab at Christmas last year. So we're all pretty young um, and it's a really engaging place to work because you're surrounded by young people that love what they do. They want to come to work because they want to find out the answer to whatever it is they're looking at. Um, and you just have great conversations with people. You talk about pretty much anything at coffee time, at morning tea. Uh, because you just are on the same wavelength. So obviously science has a bunch of perks. Specifically, though, what we do um, is looking at nerve and muscle diseases. So for you to move, a signal has to come from your brain down your spinal cord, interface with a motor neuron, and then uh, go to your muscle. So if there's an impairment in any part of this pathway, you can't move properly. Um, and that's a problem. And most of these diseases are genetic. So they can affect babies even before they're born. Um, you can be paralyzed in utero, or babies, children, or adults, really old adults. It doesn't really discriminate. So to give you some context about what that actually means for the people with the diseases, uh, Stephen Hawking had a severe one, a type of motor neuron disease. Um, and obviously that left him completely wheelchair bound. So when I talk about finding their genetic defects, I should probably fill you in a little bit on DNA. So DNA is like the blueprint for life, basically. It's like the instruction manual where it goes, okay, you're meant to look like this. You will have brown eyes and red hair and you're gonna be like this tall and whatever, um, two arms and two legs. And then you get built into a person or a dog or a plant. All of these living organisms have DNA as their basis, right? Um, but if there's a typo in the blueprint, that can be bad. <laughs> so, as this example shows, um, it can com one single letter change can completely alter the meaning of a word and be totally awkward. Um, so that's kind of the thing that we look for, is the one genetic typo that's causing somebody's disease. So this is an actual family that I've worked on. This is a Tasmanian family, um, and they didn't have an answer for a very, very long time. So this grandma has a disease, and she's passed it on to her kids and grandkids. Um, and she uh, had muscle biopsies from you know, way back in the 80s, no answer. So we revisited their case um, to figure out what's wrong and we actually ended up publishing it, which is really exciting uh, because you need to publish. That's your main like, performance indicator. It's not grades, it's publications. And so how do you find a disease gene? Well, there is a lot of this. You do a lot of coding. Uh, and a lot of data analytics. So like they were kind of saying before at the intro, um, computational stuff is becoming more and more important. Um, so you spend a lot of time doing this after and doing this, and then eventually you will hopefully, not all the time, have some sort of brainwave and think, I say, I think this is it, but that's only half the story because then you have to prove that that is actually causing the disease, right? You can't just be like, oh, I think this is it, and someone will just take your word for it. 
So one of the things we do is grow cells in, uh, in flasks, um, and then you can do stuff to the cells and experiment on them. So this is some patient fibroblasts. So it's from a patient's skin sample, and you mash it up, and then it'll grow um, at the bottom of these dishes or flasks. Um, so this was just an epic day of uh, cell culture for me. So I took a photo of it because it's like 17 flasks. It's a lot. Normally just have like one or two. Um, but what's even more cool is, okay, so there's this jellyfish and it will glow green under UV light, right? That's just like a thing that exists in nature. But you can actually uh, take the gene out of that jellyfish and put it into other animals or cells and make them glow green as well under the right light. So it's probably a bit hard to see, but there's three normal mice in here, and then these ones have GFP, um, and they are glowing. We should going green fluorescent protein is GFP. I love that it's intellectually stimulating. It's always challenging, it's always different, but I also love that it's meaningful. So it's really helping families in Perth, in Victoria. It's um, something that makes a difference, but I enjoy doing, so I'm very lucky to have both. Well, I guess being a scientist, you are the embodiment of STEM, um, but also more specifically, um, using coding has been really important, understanding statistics has been really important um, to find disease genes, um, and I guess the analytical thinking is really relevant as well. Um, I think it's important to understand that it's not as scary as it looks. If you put your mind to something, you really, you can do it. Um, and also it's a lot more interesting than maybe people think. You just have to get engaged with it and then you realise how much fun it can actually be.